Hola amigos, vamos a hablar en español primero para decir unas cositas en el chat. Acabo de enviar un, un enlace. Por favor, abran todos ese enlace. Todos los materiales suplementales van a estar ahí y también la lectura completa va a estar, está en español. Les... Um, les pido que la vayan leyendo para que puedan hacer los ejercicios con nosotros. All right, Fran. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Francesca Leo, and I'm the founder of Playing Without Pain, www.playingwithoutpain.com, if you're interested in checking it out. Um, I'm also the social media manager for the National Flu Association Performance Healthcare Committee, And I am also the social media assistant for the Art of Practicing Institute and the program coordinator for that. So I think uh, Floor has already uh, given you some instructions on the supplemental documents. Um, and it looks like she sent that to the chat. So thank you so much. Um, so I would like to start by just kind of introducing myself. But um, before I do that, I want you all to just type a one word answer into the chat and just say how you're feeling today. So just a one word answer. Si pueden poner en el chat una palabra de cómo se sienten hoy. Motivated, that's awesome. Great, excited. Wow, everyone's in a good mood. This is great. <laughs> This is gonna be really fun. Calm, tired, I get that. Tense, hmm, we'll talk about that. Good to know. Proud, awesome. So since there's so many people, I was gonna go around and have everyone introduce themselves, um, but I think we'll wait to discuss at the end of the lecture. Um, so if you have any questions throughout, Just um, send them to the chat. You can send them to me directly or to everybody, and I will get to all of the questions at the end. So for this presentation, actually, I would like to start out by asking you to raise your hand. How many of you are flutists? Okay. Awesome. Cool, so that's a majority. And how many are not flutists? Just so I can get an estimate. Okay, cool. So you don't need to be a flutist uh, to participate in this lecture. We will be talking about a couple flute specific things, but when we start the playing exercises, um, if you would like to participate, just go ahead and play on your own instrument. And I think it will be helpful to you as well. So for this presentation, you'll need a comfortable place to sit and your instrument. So I would first like to start by telling you all a bit about my personal story and how I started playing without pain. So if you had, actually, I would like you to raise your hand if you have ever experienced pain while you were playing your instrument. All right. Yeah. I get that. <laughs> so if you have your hand raised right now, you are not alone. In a study I conducted in 2017 at the Bowling Green State University College of Musical Arts, I found that 84% of students were suffering a performance-related injury so severe that it affected their ability to play at the level of which they were accustomed. In a 2009 study titled Incidents of Injury and Attitudes to Injury Management in Skilled Flute Players by Bronwyn Ackerman, Diana Kenny, and James Fortune, statistics revealed that 95% of flutists have experienced pain or injuries relating to the flute. A 2017 study by Stanek, Combs, and Murdoch revealed that 67% of musicians at the collegiate level experienced performance-related pain. So I was just 16 years old when I was diagnosed with my first performance-related injury, but I didn't fully realize what this entailed and how to treat it until several years later. 
In high school, I would sometimes play my flute four to five hours a day in rehearsals and then come home at night and practice for another two hours after a full day of classes. So I really had no concept of practicing efficiently or knowing my body's limits. And when I began my undergraduate studies, I began to feel shame around the pain I was experiencing because I didn't hear anybody talking about it. So I began to think that it was just me that was experiencing it and that there was something wrong with me. So my love of practicing when I was in my undergraduate turned into a vicious cycle of practicing past the point of pain and exhaustion because I was convinced that I was not good enough and that I was not working hard enough. I was hearing so many success stories about the best musicians practicing for eight hours a day, always being the first one in the practice room each day and the last one to leave. So since I was hearing all of these stories, I thought that's what I should be doing. So although I never quite got to eight hours a day of practicing, I, got, I did as much as I could and it really took a toll on my body. I don't ever remember feeling good when I was practicing during this time. So my injury continued to worsen until I could not physically play my flute for longer than five minutes without experiencing shooting pain through my forearms. So this served as a major wake up call. And it was at this point that I felt truly afraid that I might not be able to continue, continue pursuing a career in music. So I immediately scheduled an appointment with another musculoskeletal doctor and I received a new diagnosis of shoulder tendonitis, which indicated that the injury had spread over time from my initial diagnosis of forearm tendonitis because it was left untreated. So that summer I started a physical therapy and I connected with an Alexander Technique teacher to begin lessons. My preliminary stages of injury treatment involved a lot of trial and error. I also increased my physical activity during this time and prioritized swimming and yoga over that extra hour of practicing that I tried to get in each day. And that was tremendously helpful. So I slowly learned how to better manage my practicing and think more positively taking more frequent breaks, and valuing efficient and slow practice. So during this time, I had to say no to a lot of things because the time that I could physically play my instrument each day while an injury treatment was limited. So I also worked with my private teacher to make changes in my posture to invite more ease. And I also began research which started my project, Playing Without Pain. So if you're not familiar with my website, uh, www.playingwithpain.com. I will type that into the chat right now. Resources to prevent and treat performance related injury. So this can uh, be beneficial to all musicians and not just collegiate musicians. Um, so if you're interested, there's lots of good book re reading recommendations on there and also some descriptions of um, common performance related injuries. And um, it's basically designed to be a one stop shop for performance related injury treatment. So So as soon as I found out that a vast majority of my peers were also experiencing performance-related pain as well, but felt that they could not talk about it, I was motivated to spark the discussion and participate in the creation of a health and wellness initiative that has since grown at Bowling Green State University. So it's extremely important to seek medical attention if you're experiencing chronic pain or tension from playing your instrument. And don't feel discouraged if you have to seek the professional opinion of multiple different doctors before you re receive a prescription that is anything but just ice it and take ibuprofen or stop playing your instrument, which is something that I feel musicians often hear. So there's always a solution to any performance related injury and they're incredibly common. I like to think of an injury as a notification from your body that things aren't right. The pain you're experiencing indicates that something in your lifestyle needs to change, whether it be the way you practice, how long you practice, how to talk to yourself when you practice, how you hold your instrument, or how you take care of your body. 
So self-care looks different to each person and depends on many factors, including your lifestyle, how much free time you have, and your medical history. I like to think of self-care as putting together the pieces of a puzzle. Find the piece that's missing, identify it, and come up with solutions to bring it back to the whole. For all musicians, staying physically active is in incredibly important, especially with activities that counter the motion that your muscles are held in for so many hours a day when you're playing. So since flute is an asymmetrical instrument, it's important to spend time each day in a counter stretch. So at this point, I'm gonna have you all pick up your flutes or your instrument and put them into playing position. And just spend a moment or two with your eyes closed, identifying what muscle groups are engaged when you're in this position. And you can practice putting it down and putting it up and just really examine what muscles are engaged when you're doing this. So let me see if we got it here. Awesome. You guys look great. <laughs> Okay, so does anybody want to chime in and let me know what you've noticed? If you do, you can unmute yourself and um, just speak up. And let me know. Um, I noticed that a lot of like our shoulders are engaged and uh, like our back muscles as well. So we have to make sure that we're always like keeping a, a really good posture in yeah. order or like I also noticed that I uh, like plate into my flute instead of like letting the flute come to me. And that right. has like a lot of neck spring. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a good observation. And we will definitely talk about that. And I see some people in the chat are saying shoulder tension, especially. And I really get that because that was the basis of my performance related injury. It's really common. So we're used to a forward rotation of the shoulders, kind of like what you mentioned. And we might have a tendency to bend our necks to the right or crane it forward. So everybody's a little bit different. So now I'm gonna have you do a couple counter stretches. And for non-flutists, these can be beneficial too. Uh, so you can stay seated for the time being, but I will ask you to stand up in um, a couple minutes. So a great counter stretch is to hang your arms by your side. And it's nice to have your feet flat on the ground if you're sitting and just really feel grounded in this position. So hang your arms by your side and gently let the weight of your head move to your left until you feel a slight stretch in the right side of your neck. So this seems like a pretty basic stretch, but you can also allow your nose to reach towards your armpit for a few moments at the stretch, which makes it feel a little bit more intense. So if this hurts, come out of it. But just really focus on your breath here and notice the stretch alongside of your neck. And we'll hold this position for about 20 seconds. And if you don't feel a deep enough stretch, you can tilt your head forward just slightly and have your nose reaching towards your armpit. It doesn't have to be exactly there, but just feel, feel it in that direction. Okay, and to come out of it very slowly, lift your head up and come back to the center. And we will do that on the right side too, um, just because in stretches, I feel like it's important to balance both sides of your body, but do spend more time on your left side so that you can stretch the muscles that are usually, sometimes can be crunched up when you're playing. So we'll, we'll do the same thing on the right. And point your nose towards your armpit in the side too. And we'll stay here for about 15 seconds. Okay, so to come up gently, bring your neck back up to center. And when you were doing those stretches, you might have felt um, the blood rushing through your arms a little bit, or you might have felt the stretch in your arms as well. That's a good thing, as long as there was no pain when you were doing that. 
So if there was pain, just come out of it and maybe a different kind of stretch would be better for you. So another great counter stretch is to come into a forward fold for about 30 seconds before and after you start practicing to let the weight of your torso hang down and release any tension in your back and shoulders. So if you don't know what a forward fold is, I'm gonna have you all stand up and I'll stand up with you. So go ahead and stand up. So this is a good opportunity and I'm gonna put you on gallery view so I can see everybody. Awesome. So this is a really good opportunity to practice standing. So when I'm standing, I've recently noticed that I tend to bear all of my weight on my heels, which leads me to stand a little bit further back. And some people might have the opposite, where you tend to um, slouch a little bit when you stand and have the majority of your weight resting on the ball of your foot. So this is a yoga practice, um, but try and have your hips, your feet hips width apart. So that means exactly how it sounds. Uh, look down and see where your hip joints are and make sure your feet are directly below them. And so we're gonna focus on our toes for a second and this will help with standing. So I want you to, you can't see my toes right now, but I want you to reach all of your toes up and one by one, slowly bring them down. Does that make sense to everybody? Cool. So this will help you feel a little bit more grounded and just be more aware of your toes and your feet. And now I'm gonna have you shift your weight forward and back a couple times. You can have your arms at your sides. And slowly make the motion a little bit smaller until the weight is evenly distributed between the ball of your foot and your heel. So this is the position in which you are completely balanced. And it may feel like you're a little bit further forward than you're used to, or a little bit further back. But this is a great exercise to do um, every day or a couple times a day just to really examine how you're standing because that will help in all other aspects of your life. So now we're going to do a forward fold. So now that we're nice and balanced, you're gonna lead with your nose and slowly bend at your waist until you are at the point of which you can't go any lower. So I'm gonna stay up a little bit to watch you and explain, um, but really just hang here and allow your arms to dangle. They don't have to touch the ground. And if they touch the ground, that's great. And you can also hold opposing elbows too, if you like, and that helps bring the weight down a little bit. So you should feel this in your upper back and in your neck and in your arms as well. And in your lower back. So we're gonna stay here for 10 seconds and you can shift your weight to the sides and move your arms as well. And don't forget to breathe. Okay, to come up, you're gonna slowly build up vertebrae by vertebrae, one by one, and your head's gonna come up last. and you can shake out your arms and shrug your shoulders a little bit too. So you might've also felt that in the lower back, but it's good to do this before you start practicing and during practice breaks and after you start practicing to really counter the motion that we're in so many hours a day and really just let your upper body relax for a bit. So the, I believe the final stretch I'm going to teach you is we're gonna stay standing but it's going to be arm circles. So um, I'll demonstrate first and then I'll have you do it with me. So we're gonna do really wide arm circles, but make sure that it's very slow. And try not to arch your back. We're gonna go forward first, and we're gonna do this 10 times. 
you might feel some crunching in your shoulders. That's what I feel at least. But the more you keep doing that, the less frequent that will become. Okay, and once you've gotten to 10, we're gonna change directions. And be sure not to arch your back in this position. Just stay nice and balanced. I lost count, but I think that was about 10. So once you're at 10, go ahead and take a seat. So take a couple of moments and shrug your shoulders up and down. Get used to sitting again. And how do you all feel? You can either type it in the chat or you can unmute yourself and let me know. Less stress, that's awesome. Intention, much more relaxed and centered. Awesome. Great. Yeah, so those are exercises that you can do before you start practicing. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later. More relaxed, but also more active and flexible. Less tension. Awesome. So I'll talk a little bit later about um, how you can do that in your, how you can build it into your practice routine. But now we're going to move to a slight playing warm up. So for many of us, our instrument can be a source of stress and trauma. In a recent body mapping lesson, I discovered that I hold an incredible amount of tension even in the way I play and prepare to bring my flute up well before I play. Also, I feel a lot of tension. And even when I just touch my flute, I feel immediately that I'm gripping and that my shoulders are tight. So it's really important to really be aware of that. And we'll talk more about that in a second. So it's important to check in with yourself each day to see where you're at before beginning your practice session. So we're going to do this through a brief body scan that can be done while you're sitting or while you're lying on the ground on your back. So today we'll practice seated and have your instrument in your lap because we'll immediately go and put it up into playing position after we're finished. So find a comfortable seat. Some of you might choose to cross your legs, some might not. And begin by just noticing your breath. And you can close your eyes while doing this. So don't pass any judgment on your breath. Just simply notice it. And take a few natural breaths here. And notice if any feelings or emotions come up during this time. And don't pass judgment on them. Just notice it because your emotional well-being is just as important as your physical well-being. You may also want to label those emotions in your mind. Maybe it's fear, maybe it's stress, maybe it's frustration, maybe it's discomfort. So just check in on your mind and see where it's at first. So begin to notice the top of your head. Notice it perfectly balancing on top of your neck, shoulders, and torso. Feel as though someone attached a very tiny string to the top of your head and is gently pulling it upwards, allowing more space for your neck to be free. Next, notice your forehead and your eyebrows. Notice if you're furrowing your brow or holding tension in your forehead. Breathe in deeply and breathe out any tension in your forehead and eyebrows. Allow this area to be free. Now notice your jaw and your tongue. 
Notice if you're clenching your jaw or if your tongue is stiff. We spend so much time using our jaw and tongue to play the flute. And sometimes we forget to release this tension once we're finished playing. So breathe in deeply and breathe out any tension in your jaw and tongue. Now move your focus down to your neck. Notice how your neck feels and notice if you're holding any tension at the base of your neck or at the sides of your neck. Invite freedom and ease to your neck and allow your neck to be tall and take up space. So notice the length on the sides of your neck, in front and in back. Breathe in deeply and breathe out any tension in your neck. Now notice your shoulders, your arms, and your fingers. Take a deep breath in and let your exhale travel all the way through the tips of your fingers. So do this a few times and you may feel the blood flow returning all the way down your arms. You might feel it, that the temperature is a little bit warmer. So thank your hands for all the work they do to allow you to play your instrument. Now notice your stomach and allow it to be soft. A lot of the times in our pedagogy, we're told to support and that can be translated by clenching our abs or tightening our core. So just allow, your couple, allow a couple moments for your stomach to be soft and notice how deeply you can breathe. Now notice your legs. If your legs are crossed, you may want to uncross them at this time. So breathe in and breathe out through your leg. Release any tension in your thighs, your calves, your ankles, your feet, and your toes. Take a few deep breaths to fully move through your entire leg feeling the blood flow returning to your toes. Wiggle your toes and feel this sensation. Now observe how your entire body feels and just do a brief scan, seeing if there are still any areas that are still holding tension or if you still feel pain anywhere. Focus on those areas and take two to three more deep breaths to release any remaining tension. Come back to the awareness on your breath and slowly blink open your eyes. Welcome back. Now place your hands on your flute or your instrument and take a moment to notice how it feels. You can pick it up and put it down a couple times. Notice the weight of it and think of how long we are spending each day just holding up this instrument. So you're all muted at this time. Um, if you're not, please mute yourself and we'll begin playing our flutes. So take a few deep breaths and slowly pick up your instrument. So close your eyes again and move your flute slowly in whatever direction you wish. So this is a little bit different. So you can may choose to put it above your head, bring it to the opposite side, Maybe you want to do a rowing motion. But this 
challenges our body to release some tension when we're actually in playing position. Because if you can manage to stay free while you're doing this, then it should be possible in any other circumstance. So once you feel ready, guide your flute into playing position, but don't rush. And pick your favorite note and play it, remaining as relaxed as possible. See what tension you can let go of while you play this note. And also scan your body to see where you might be holding on to tension and invite yourself to let it go. See how good you can feel when you're playing this note. So once you achieve a sense of ease and freedom while playing this note, start with a bit of improvisation. Play whatever you want and pass no judgment on yourself whatsoever during this time. So you could continue playing a single note. You could play your favorite melody. You can make up your own melody. Just play whatever you want and really focus on the ease and the freedom. Keep scanning your body to see if you're holding tension anywhere and just invite yourself to let it go. Feel the resonance of your flute throughout your entire body. All right, great job. I'll have you come back. And would anyone like to let me know how you feel and if that was effective? You can unmute yourself or you could type it in the chat. Uh, I think I feel better, but I still have like my uh, left shoulder up to my left side of my neck. It still feels slightly tight yeah so I don't know if I have to just like shift I don't know change my position completely <laughs> yeah it's possible um it's also because that pain has probably um been present every time you play it's going uh -huh. to take a while to actively release that and it won't happen with just one time so keep doing this I encourage you to keep doing this and I'll also bring up some more resources at the end that you might be able to check into for this specific tension. Um, but just know that that's really common to have mm -hmm. shoulder pain and there's definitely ways to prevent it and to treat it and manage it. So I'm actually gonna go through that um, in just a second in a PowerPoint and we'll, I'll talk about more, but thank you so okay. much. Thank you. So set your timer for every 15 minutes during your practice sessions to check in again and see if you've lost this sense of ease that you just cultivated. If the answer is yes, take a short break and find it again before proceeding. Don't accept negativity into your practice space. This is really important. It's not productive. And this is your personal time when you're free to experiment, free to make mistakes and free to be imperfect. It's your time to discover solutions and not punish yourself for the problems. So that's called positive self-talk and it is very difficult to cultivate if you're not used to it, but it's really, really, really helpful. And it can also help prevent and treat and manage injuries as well. So now I'm going to transition to what to do when you're injured. So I'm gonna share a PowerPoint with you all and we're going to go through the steps together. So feel free to take notes on this, but the slideshow will also be available to you in a digital format, and I can also send it to the chat after we're finished. So I'm gonna share my screen. This, po <clears throat> this PowerPoint can be found on the folder link that was sent in both English and Spanish. Thank you, Floor. All right, so the first step, if you're injured, your first step is to seek medical attention. 
So schedule an appointment with a musculoskeletal doctor and seek the opinion of multiple medical professionals if you're able to, if you're not getting a straight answer. Explain to the doctor that playing your instrument is your career and is or will be your primary source of income. There's always a solution for every performance related injury. And also if you um, don't have insurance or if uh, you're not able to afford going to see a doctor right now, um, I'll include some other options that you can look into, but I'm also working on compiling some resources um, for students in that situation. So I will hopefully have that in the next few weeks. Um, so if you're interested, you can let me know at the end of the presentation and I can send that to you. So the second step is to receive your diagnosis and follow the doctor's orders. Ask about physical therapy, massage therapy, or chiropractic care and ask what would work best for you. Ask about in-network options and options that are covered by your insurance. If you don't currently have insurance, again, check out the list of resources that I have attached to this presentation to learn more. And that is in the chat right now in the, the folder. So step number three is to begin receiving medical treatment and talk to your teacher or mentor about what's going on. So if you don't feel comfortable talking to your mentor, find a faculty member, a counselor, or friends that you can talk to. It's important to find a support system to help you sort through this process of recovering from and managing performance-related injuries. If you don't feel comfortable talking to anyone about this, consider following some performing arts health accounts on Instagram, and I've listed those on the resources page as well, to see others share their stories and to know that you're not alone. And if you need someone to talk to, I'm always available, so you can DM me on Instagram or send me an email. Hi, Fran. I think um, the PowerPoint uh, slides are not showing up. Oh, no. Okay. Let's see. So we see this, but not... Um, I think you have to choose the, the, the new window. Okay. Let's see. Is it working? There you now? go. Yes. Good? Okay. Thank you so much for letting me know. Okay. Let me know if it goes away again, too. Oops. Oh, man. Okay. Did slide number four show up? Good. Okay. Awesome. So if you're unable to find an answer for your performance related pain, you can consult the NFA Performance Healthcare Committee's Health Advisory Board. So the NFA Performance Healthcare Committee has a health advisory board full of doctors, surgeons, physical therapists, personal trainers, and more. And all of these professionals are directly interested in helping flutists navigate performance-related injuries. So you can submit a question to the Performance Healthcare Committee by sending me an email. Uh, we're currently working on a way to make this information accessible to the public, but for now, um, the easiest way is going to be to send me an email and I will forward it. So I'll forward your question to them and I'll send you back their answers. And this is free. So the next step is to connect with a professional network and a social media network for at-home injury prevention and treatment resources. And again, I've listed this on the resources page included with this presentation. So it's important to learn about performance-related injuries and also read the experiences of others, especially if you're feeling alone or if you're not receiving the help you need. And number six, at this point, I do need a volunteer. So um, we'll be going over an efficient practicing strategy. Um, so if anyone would like to volunteer, either raise your hand or unmute yourself. I'm gonna stop sharing for a second. I can, if you like. All right, I would love that. Hi, Shelby. How are you? I'm doing all right, how are you? Good, good, where are you at currently? Um, I'm currently actually in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan in the United oh, States. Yeah. I'm like a couple hours south of you. Oh, hey. <laughs> in Detroit area right now. Okay. That's awesome, nice to meet you. You too. You're a flutist, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, awesome. 
So I'm gonna screen share my efficient practicing template. This is also available in the folder for you to download, um, but for right now I'll screen share it. And um, can you see that? It's still on the um, documents. Uh, can you see the efficient practicing template? Is, is it on the PowerPoint? No, it's on the, um, it says the Puerto Rico Flute Symposium and it's just a bunch of other files. Oh no, okay. I'll stop sharing. Um, sorry about that. That's okay. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, can you see it now? No, I think what you have to do is you have to go to the, um, like what you did before, you have to share it that way. Okay. Let's see. Sorry about that. Thanks for bearing with me, everybody. Um, how about now? Yes. <laughs> Great. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so this is the efficient practicing template. You can print this out um, and try it on your own, or you can use it as a PDF. So the first page is uh, lists some efficient practicing strategies and some daily check-ins of questions to ask yourself and also some additional reminders as you're practicing. So the second page, do you see the second page? Mm -hmm. Great. So this is going to be the efficient practicing template that you can fill out. So I wanna start by asking you what repertoire you're working on right now. Um, I'm currently in the midst of learning the Hindemith Sonata and then going through the Mozart Concerto in D. Awesome. Uh, are you preparing them for anything specific or are you just learning them? Grad auditions. Grad auditions. Great. Awesome. Good luck. Um, so when is the deadline for um, training? Not till I would time. probably say like mid-October. Mid-October. Okay, cool. So you're going to fill out, you can fill out the date and time. Um, you don't have to. But in the repertoire list, you're going to fill out um, the pieces based on the priority. So which piece do you feel that you need more practice on at this moment? Um, probably the Hindemith. Yeah, cool. I, I totally understand. <laughs> so you would put that as number one, and then uh, you'd put the Mozart, you said, mm -hmm. as number two. Uh, so you would prioritize the Hindemith for now. This template is designed to be a one hour block of practicing that can be repeated throughout the day. Uh, but if you only have one hour, which sometimes that's all we have in a given day, it's a good way to make sure that you're hitting the most important um, spots that you need to when you're practicing. So what are some of your goals um, other than learning the Hindemith Sonata? And this could be goals um, on things you want to improve on your playing or like specific passages in the Hindemith that you are hoping to work on? Um, for me, when it comes down to getting to the very technical sections, I think we can all kind of agree with that. We kind of have that moment of, okay, the hard part's coming up. Yep. And then, yep. Feel that. Because of just like working on not psyching myself out in those faster, more difficult sections. That's really important. So you would write that on the goals part. And uh, so maybe you could frame that as building confidence in the difficult sections. Um, so I would recommend definitely practicing under tempo and um, focusing on just feeling really confident and secure when you're practicing under tempo, because that will translate as you begin to speed it up. So um, I've included time for a physical warm up, so you can use some of the stretches that we learned earlier and you can also incorporate your own. But it's really important to do a five minute physical warm up before you start playing, um, just to get your muscles moving and your blood flowing. So I included a musical warm up space. Um, if it's your first time playing in the day and you only have 10 minutes, um, I would recommend starting slow and maybe starting with some long tones and harmonics and just really focus on relieving tension. And then for scales, um, I usually do, like if I only have 10 minutes, I usually do full range scales and thirds and maybe like one of fourth, fifths or sixths. So just uh, really plan out what you would like to do in your warm up, and um, 
if you need more time to warm up. Don't worry about it because I usually spend 30 minutes, but if you only have 10, it's nice to um, just plan that out. So after you warm up, you'll take a five minute break. And then this 15 minutes of detailed repertoire practice, that would be when you would focus in on one of the difficult passages. So do you have a specific passage in mind? Um, really, when it comes to the first movement of the sonata, just getting the, um, the accidentals when it comes to the triplets going down, so. Yeah, okay. That and then the third movement, so. Yeah, of course. So for this, um, to, to make it the most effective, I would recommend just picking like a phrase or two and really putting in some focused and um, intentional practice in. So just pick a phrase or two of music and write it down and write down exactly what you would like to accomplish in the next 15 minutes. So this probably won't be like, I wanna play this perfectly in the next 15 minutes because it'll take a while, it's a process. But maybe you could focus on, I would like to um, improve my technique on this one specific measure or a couple measures. Um, and this is going to be a really experimental time. So you have one goal in mind um, and you can start to do some trial and error and see what's working and what doesn't. But ultimately focusing on really small sections of music at a time will really um, integrate it into your playing and um, it will create positive effects when you come back to that section um, as you're continuing to work on the piece. So then you would take a five minute break and I like to set timers for myself because if I don't, sometimes I'll just keep practicing until the cats come home. <laughs> so um, the second uh, space for additional detailed repertoire practice that would be something completely different. So say you worked on the first movement for this block. The second block could be a passage or two in the third movement, and you might have completely different goals. And then once you're finished with that, take both sections and do an under tempo run through. And you may be noticing things as you're doing this, um, and it might present some other challenges that you want to improve. So um, definitely write those down after you do the under tempo run through and that will guide your next practice session. So I hope that was helpful. I'll stop sharing screen right now. But do you have any questions? Does anyone have any questions? It's okay if not. <laughs> All right. I really like the timer, thank you. And okay, so I'm not going to bother screen sharing for the final slide um, because I don't know if it'll work or not. But above all, stay positive and know that you're not alone. So seek counseling or therapy if you're also experiencing mental health issues. Many institutions also offer free healthcare services and physical therapy. Um, so a lot of colleges and universities and conservatories offer this. But if your institution does not have this, connect with the medical community on Instagram. And I really encourage that because there's a lot of great resources out there for free for some at-home exercises and stretches available on the resources PDF. So taking care of your mind and body is the most important thing and music will wait. So that is the completion of my presentation. I would like to allow some time to discuss things or answer questions um, or just get to know you. So if anyone has questions, Go ahead and unmute yourself. I have a question. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh. Hi, Deshaun. How okay. Uh, I'm well. How are you? I'm good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So um, my biggest concern when it has come to uh, playing has been I would sometimes feel like a like a burning sensation in my wrists. Yeah. Um, that too. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what I started to practice was like getting back into like a daily yoga routine and I haven't felt it nearly as much since. Yeah. But aside from that, um, what are some other suggestions that you have? Because also this week I had a really, really strange sensation in my knuckles. Maybe the house got too cold, mm -hmm. but my left knuckles were, were pained. And then that was in the, yeah, that was an uh, an experience I had never had before, so. Wow, yeah, that's definitely something you want to keep track of. Um, sorry to hear that you've been experiencing pain. 
it's not fun. Um, so yoga is great. I love doing yoga. And also you stretch your forearms a bit. Do you know any forearm stretches? Uh, yeah, I do this one quite a lot. And then doing it backwards. Yeah. And then also sitting and having my hands facing my butt. Oh, yeah, that's a good like, one. And opening up the chest that way, so. Nice. Um, and I also, I had I started out with forearm tendonitis, um, and I actually found that stretching uh, and relieving tension in my shoulders helps a lot because the arm is connected. So if you also have tension in your shoulders and you might not realize it, it could be um, radiating down to your forearm. So do you have any kind of lacrosse ball or tennis ball? Um, or I... I don't. I only have my, my dog's chew toy. Okay. Well, it might work if it's like a little squishy ball. <laughs> or, um, yeah, so anything like that, if you take it and you put it against a wall and you put it right in between your shoulder blade and your wall and you just kind of like roll around on it, that's a really good way to relieve some tension in your shoulder blade as well. And it might help with your forearm. Um, but I have included some, on my resources list, I have um, some medical professionals on there as well that you might want to contact. Um, but also if you, do you have Instagram? Uh, yeah. Okay. So if you follow Music Strong Fitness on Instagram, uh, she's the chair of the NFA Performance Healthcare Committee. She has a lot of great like exercise and stretch stretches for specific instrumentalists and she does Instagram live all the time and I followed them and they're really helpful and I felt a lot better after okay. it. Okay. So yeah, try try those stretches and um, also just maybe set a timer to take more frequent breaks when you're practicing and don't try and play through the pain if you can help it. Yeah. Yeah, but sorry to hear that. <laughs> and thanks for contributing. Of course. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions? I do. Okay. Hi, Jason. Hi. Hi. Um, so my question's about um, wrist pain as well as like wrist cracking and also like thumb pain and thumb cracking. Is that, is that something that you might know about? Um, so I have the issue of cracking with my shoulders a lot and I've talked to a lot of doctors about it do you does it hurt when your wrists crack sometimes i usually notice it more so if i've been practicing for more than like three to four hours okay yeah that that would make sense um if you're experiencing cracking and it doesn't hurt um basically every medical professional i've talked to said not to worry about that so much and um that cracking is pretty normal but if there's pain, that's definitely something to be aware of. Uh, so if you're able, I would go and consult a doctor um, just to ask them about that, um, just to see if there are some solutions that they can provide you. I'm not a trained medical professional, unfortunately, so I can't um, advise you anything, but you might want to check in with someone, but just know that cracking is normal as long as it doesn't hurt. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry to hear you experiencing that. <laughs> It's all good. I have a question about, so I don't have a lot of pain, but more like numbness, especially my left hand. Um, my teacher actually, she recommended a finger port for your flute. Yeah. Um, is that, I mean, what are your thoughts on that? I'm about to order it probably sometime today. Yeah. So I think they're great. I used to actually use one on my flute. I haven't used it since. Um, but for me, I have really small hands. So a thumb port actually really helped. I was experiencing some numbness too. Um, but so thumb ports or finger ports definitely help give you um, a healthier hand position. So I, I think they're great. It's any modification you can make to make yourself more comfortable is definitely worth it. Okay. Jason okay. says, I love my finger and thumb ports. Awesome. Okay. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I hope that helped. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Hi, Francesca. Hi, Thomas. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Good. <laughs> um, so for everyone, I'm an oboist, obviously not a flute player, but uh, my question might be relevant. I hope it's relevant. Um, but for oboe, we have to use a lot of muscles in our face for our embouchure. 
And um, as I'm like working on refining my embouchure and all of that, I'm noticing that I am getting a lot of tension in my face muscles where I've never experienced tension before, just because I haven't ever really used them Mm -hmm. a lot. So what would you recommend in building those muscles in your face that are like small and like kind of sensitive? Um, How would you, so how would you recommend going about that to build those muscles um, and balance like playing the instrument correctly? So I I would recommend if you're trying to build muscle, um, start with very small, segments of practicing at a time. So like maybe only five minutes, um, especially if you're feeling like tired or, or tense or if it hurts. Um, and then gradually, once once you start feeling more comfortable with like five minute increments, then gradually uh, build it to 10 minutes and see how you're feeling. Um, so I would definitely go the gradual route for building strength, but also um, after you finish practicing, a good way to release that tension is just to like, kind of like palpate your face like this. Yeah. And usually that helps me um, feel a little bit more relaxed and kind of resets me for the next time I play. But definitely um, be aware of the tension and don't push yourself, especially at first. Right. When you're trying to do that. Does that help? Yeah, definitely. Great. <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. Anyone else? And cool. And I see an FYI from Katie. Thanks so much for chiming in on that. Yeah, definitely helpful. Yeah, so everyone read Katie's message as well, just an FYI. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Does anyone have any other questions? All right. Well, it was so nice to meet you all. And thank you so much for joining. Uh, if you have any questions, you can send me an email. I'll send my, my email will be, um, I'll send it to the chat right now. And also, oh yeah, Floor, that's a great tip. If you're, so if you're double jointed, the 3M finger splints work really well. And that's something that the Performance Healthcare Committee um, had talked about last year. But if you don't know what those are, Floor, do you think you'd be able to send a link? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So thank you so much, everyone, for being here. I really appreciate it. I hope it was helpful. Feel free to reach out to me at any point. Um, I'm always available, and it was really nice to meet you all. Any last comments, Floor? Yes. So I'm about to send that link on here. Uh, thank you so much. This was a great beginning to the symposium. Um, please come back at 2.30 for our next event, which is a masterclass with international soloist and piccolo-focused artist Christine Erlander-Beard. So we'll see you back here at 2.30. Awesome. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day and stay safe and healthy. Bye.